You're watching Seatome TV. Knowledge is power. So, you know, it's important to understand uh, what tumor markers are. And the definition of, of, of a tumor marker is a substance found in the tissue or blood or any other bodily fluid um, that may be a sign, may be a sign of cancer or, you know, certain benign conditions um, or non-cancer, you know, um, and most tumor markers are produced um, more by the tumor cell than by normal cells, but they can be produced um, by both cell types. And that's kind of a bit of a problem. Okay. <laughs> so I've used this diagram here to show you uh, what the common tumor markers are. And this is not all of them, this is just some of them, but these are basically used in pathology and they're, they're used for um, monitoring patients too. Okay. Um, so we have, you know, uh, AFP, um, alpha fer ferroprotein, um, we've got cancer antigen 125, uh, the CA125, you'll see that there. Um, we've got cancer antigen 15-3, uh, um, carbohydrate antigen 19-9, that's CA19-9, you'll see that on there too. Uh, and then CEA, um, carcinoembryonic antigen, that's a common one used in many different cancers. And then there's other ones that are specific to certain, certain types of cancers, such as prostate specific antigen PSA. Um, so the important thing to understand about these is they can be found in normal tissues. Um, and as you can see, uh, they're, they're used, uh, you know, for example, with CEA, it's found in many different types of cancers. And so, uh, you know, this is a problem with, with pathology these days is it's, it takes a lot of work and a lot of different um, tumor markers to really identify what type of tumor you have. Um, and, you know, that's basically just looking at the type of tissue that, that's there. So these are the common ones that are used. Now, the problem I have with this is they are not cancer specific. Um, they can occur in different cells. Um, they're, you know, they're, they're not a good way of monitoring cancer progression. There's something a lot of doctors, you know, will use, but they won't take too seriously. Now you can see high CEA in patients that, that don't have cancer, and you can see definitely low CEA in pa patients that have, you know, very, very metastatic advanced stage disease. So what's important to understand is these are used, but you can't put a lot of weight in them. Mm. Um, you know, we know if you have advanced disease and high CEA and, uh, you know, high um, CA-125, then we know obviously those markers are working, mm. but, but, you know, that's not the way you want to do it. Mm. So what I would like to do is move on to the concept of tumor markers in precision oncology. And if you look at this here, you'll see um, there is one tumor marker down on the bottom right under colon cancer. Now it's interesting that it's under colon cancer because it's actually quite common in melanoma as well. Um, and it's more rare in colon cancer, but it is there. And uh, it's included on this list because if you have this mutation, then it prevents you from getting a certain uh, type of treatment in colon cancer. And you're talking about the BRAF one. BRAF V600E, e. mm -hmm. yes. So what that refers to is it's a mutation at the 600th amino acid where the, um, the, the amino acid designated by the V has been replaced with an amino acid designated by the E. Mm. And so what happens when that happens is this is called an activating mutation. And so this causes any cell that has that mutation to have an overactive BRAF protein. Mm. And BRAF in this particular case is going to be uh, involved in copying and growing and you know growth and metastatic development. So this mm. is called an oncoprotein now, mm. or also known as an oncogene, the product of an oncogene. So BRAF V600E is a great tumor marker for, for patients that have that mutation. And that's because um, typically, and in most cases, now not always, 
it's going to only be in the cancer cells. And also, because it's an early driving mutation, it's going to be a mutation that is in the vast majority, if not all of the cancer cells. Mm. So a good tumor marker is going to be highly representative of all of the tumor cells. So in other words, it's a mutation that occurs very, very early on in the development of the cancer. So it's an early mutation. It's one of the first four or five mutations that occurs that converts the normal cell into a cancerous cell. And therefore, all of the cancer cells that grow from that, regardless if they have a different driver, are going to have expression of that protein. Ooh, they're, they're, going to have, they're going to have the DNA of that. They may not have expression, but they'll have the DNA. Mm -hmm. And so you can actually use um, liquid biopsies to track the amount of, of that mutation that is around. Mm -hmm. And so this is how we actually use tumor markers. We will look at the amount of that BRAF V600E. And so what we'll do is we'll do a test on the patient's blood. Um, if they're gonna try a new drug, they'll try it the, right before they start the drug. What we'll do is we'll have a blood test. We'll do our liquid biopsy test. We'll look at the level of that BRAF V600E um, mutation compared to the normal version of that gene. And so we know that the normal cells will have the V variable at the 600th position, whereas the cancer cells will have the E amino acid at that position. So what we do is we measure the amount. And if we see, let's say there's 12 or 15% of the E, e uh, amino acid variant, then we know that uh, that particular uh, you know, protein or DNA is, is at a fairly high amount and is expressed. Then if we go and give that patient the same test to or give them the drug, and then two or three weeks later after being on that, we do the same test again and we look at that. And if we see that that amount of that E has gone down compared to the amount of the V, then we know right off the bat that this treatment is working. Mm. If it stayed the same, then you, we can say that the drug is not really effective. You're getting a stable mm. disease, which is one of the resist criteria. The tumor is not growing, but you know, they're, we're getting a stable amount. Mm -hmm. Now, if it, of course, that amount increases over time while on the drug, then we know that that treatment is not working. Mm -hmm. And this is a beautiful way of determining whether a drug treatment is going to work for you. You know, with this new liquid biopsy technology, we can try any drug and immediately know when it's working or not. So we don't have to spend three or four months uh, waiting for the tumors to grow and spread to see if it's worked or to shrink for that matter, mm -hmm. because that can take many months. And by the time that happens, you've been on this expensive drug for a long period of time. And it, additionally, if you know, you don't want to use yourself as a Petri dish and find out that you spent, you know, four months on a drug that hasn't worked. And now you've got tumors in your liver and, you know, your lungs and so on. Um, you don't want to have that situation. So with this technology, um, with the DNA-based tumor markers that are unique to your cancer, you can determine very quickly uh, whether a drug treatment is working or not. Mm -hmm. And so I urge every patient to get tumor DNA sequencing, find out what those tumor mutation markers are, and then use liquid biopsies as monitoring in conjunction with PET CTs. Mm -hmm. Um, it's the ultimate tool, and this tool is a game changer for cancer treatment. Okay. So. So, was, did you want to say more about this diagram? Um, no, that's it. That's all you want to say that's about tumor markers? That's all I wanted markers? to say about tumor markers, yes. Okay, all right. Well, then I have some questions for you. Hang on a second. Let me go and open my questions. Okay, I was prepared for the usual half hour going over of things here. Um, okay, so summarizing there, uh, we can use these, uh, we can use the, the tumor testing. Yes. The genetic sequencing genetic of your sequencing, tumor. Yeah. Which can also be done with a liquid biopsy, uh, but it's better if you have tumor mm -hmm. tissue. Uh, and then once you know what's going on, and I know that 
there's some there's some concerns about people just getting a test result and then just going with that without understanding the nuances and all the extra details that are often included in those reports and yes. how they can influence people. That's so correct. Yes. knowing your yes. tumor marker is not sufficient to then be able to get the right treatment, no. just so you know. But there's a lot more to it than that. Get the genetic testing, the tumor DNA sequencing is a crucial element mm -hmm. of being able to access all these these options and then also to be able to have the blood test yes just a little Liquid biopsy you might not like needles but it's just a little blood test it takes just a few vials yes, of definitely. blood to be able to tell well, well all of these tumor markers on this diagram are blood tests mm -hmm. so you've got and i'm just feeling for you who's probably already <laughs> well, had a, them, a lot of, of pokes uh, this last while, if you have been diagnosed with cancer, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, far less invasive than a CT scanner or other of the tests that you might need to do or a further uh, tissue biopsy to just have a little bit of blood taken every now and then to make sure that your treatment is working as well as you hope. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you for watching Seatome TV. Subscribe below and stay informed.